moikka! Hey! Welcome, Welcome to, to our podcast, podcast Mastering Finland. Finland. I'm Jean and I'm from California. I'm Petra and I'm from the Czech Republic. We're here to chat about our life in Finland. Hello everybody, welcome back to our podcast and we have an amazing guest on today. Let me introduce Priyanka Banerje. She is a diversity and inclusion public speaker and coach and an entrepreneur. Hi Priyanka, it's great to have you here. Hi and it's really lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Firstly, I want to ask, did I pronounce your surname well or was it really <laughs> yes, bad? Almost correct. It's a Priyanka Banerjee. Okay, Banerjee. Okay, sorry for that. No but worries. Thank you. I'll remember. Yeah. Uh, so, could you please tell us more about yourself and where are you from and how did you get to Finland? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, hello everyone. Once again, my name is Priyanka and I'm a diversity and inclusion coach and the co-founder of Business Wiz or U. Uh, with our company, we are working with uh, businesses and organizations to help them become more diverse and inclusive. Uh, I came to Finland in early 2016 and uh, my background is uh, as an engineer. So I worked for an IT company and one of our clients were from Finland and that's how I came here to work for them. At that point, I had no idea <laughs> that I would become an entrepreneur, but yeah. So I'm originally from India. And so now I have my uh, business in here in living in Finland and enjoying it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing that you just like randomly got got to this country. Yeah, that's through, true. Through, through your work. Yeah. How are you liking it so far? <laughs> it, it has been actually very interesting, a lot, a lot of learning, lots of ups and downs, but uh, definitely I would say that it was a good decision for me to come here because I actually got just a very short notice to be here <laughs> and I am glad that I made that decision. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And I bet that everybody in Finland is so happy to have you here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, totally. So, so you said that you got got to Finland through through the through the job. Yeah. But how how did you decide to work on on inclusion and diversity in in Finnish companies? Yeah, so it was actually a very interesting path because I did not think about that I would ever not do tech because I really like that. I have been an IT consultant for most, most of my life. But also on the same hand, I worked with a lot of diverse individuals from across the globe. Um, I had different clients from many different places. So I felt that there is a a gap in understanding different people and also there is uh, there was some something that was missing in the sense that I felt that there were some microaggressions at work because you are like a woman of color in tech uh, also it's people have biases against that women are not so good at technology and so I did not really think about of those things very much because we have also normalized it a lot. But then but then later when I thought that, okay, I need to grow and I need to do something uh, which makes me feel good and motivated, I quit my corporate job and I did my MBA from La Pendanta. I worked with a lot of different startups and uh, all the time I kept coming to the same topic that how, how much lack of understanding exists about inclusion and providing people with equitable opportunities to grow and to have the feeling that they belong uh, in the organizations. And that's what I took that, okay, everything comes to the same point. Maybe instead of creating another tech company, I want to help these companies that exist uh, with this topic itself, how they can be more inclusive, how they can make their employees feel that they belong and they can do much more. Yeah, that's that's amazing, and you know we need 
lot of it, I think, still here in Finland. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I imagine that all of our listeners will probably agree with that as well. So why are diversity and inclusion important to a company in Finland? Um, I think it's really important. First of all, it's important for any company. But in Finland, it is even more important because we have a lot of different challenges in here. For example, we have a huge talent gap. We don't have enough people uh, to work in the organizations. And in coming maybe, let's say, 10 years, we will have so much demand for different people to work in here. So some way or the other, the companies will have to employ diverse people, right? So if they have to, they need to learn how to manage them, how to give them a culture so that they can retain them. And also... uh, um another another important challenge in here is that the market is so small so eventually companies that are looking to grow they have to internationalize and if you have to internationalize you need international people on your team and you just don't have to attract them but you also have to retain them and at the moment there is such a huge gap because we have a lot of talent and there is a lot of demand but somehow they are not matched and still we need a lot of more people to come here and work for us so there is quite a lot of need to understand where is the challenge and what are the gaps and how we can fulfill those mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely so so you said you have a company now that helps other companies to become more diverse and inclusive so is it always the company that is contacting you to so and they're trying to get help from you or are you also like trying to research and seeing companies that you could potentially work with or how how is your company working yeah. working like Yeah, so now I have a company and I actually started speaking about this topic almost like um, when I came here just after some time, I think three years ago. And at that time, I understood that nobody is talking about it, like nobody even knows about it. So for me, it was first essential to make the companies aware that why they need it. So, of course, I have to go to them, I have to meet them and tell them that what is the business case for diversity for them. But now in uh, now I see in the last three, four years, things have changed a little bit. Companies are more aware about the situation. They want uh, themselves to be more open and they are trying a little bit more than they were Um, And so there have been companies who also come to me directly to ask for services. But I think it's a blend. So it has to be both. We have to reach to the companies who are still uh, at the threshold where they are deciding if it is good for them or not. So you have to reach them and make them understand. And then there are some companies who already know that they want to do this. And so they also reach us. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I guess that that makes sense for sure. Um, so, what are the some of the most common piece uh, pieces of advice that you offer to companies in Finland related to diversity and cl- inclusion? How they can make it more accessible to foreigners in their company and and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think the first and foremost thing that I say is that you need to educate yourself like as leaders and also your teams so it means that first of all there needs to be a commitment that you are going to do this and then helping your employees understand what it means and helping yourself understand what it means for your company also awareness uh, and education not just uh, like for the teams but also for individuals like individually you need to understand that what are your biases what are your privileges and not seeing them as a shame topic or you know like we have this stigma around that oh my god what what happens if people know that I am biased toward this particular group of individuals so it is perfectly normal because all of us have biases and so it's important to not think of it as a stigma rather think of it as a learning about yourself 
So we need a lot of that. And we also need the companies to assess their um, current diversity and inclusion in the companies, because we also see that a lot of Finnish companies, they believe that they have a great culture because we have a really good work-life balance and Finland is the happiest country in the world, you know, so everything <laughs> yeah. is good and happy, but that's not the case. The case is that you have to analyze and you have to assess and measure what's actually going on in the company and how uh, how you can um, see where the gaps are so that you can reach your company goals faster. And of course, I think one very key thing that I would like to tell the companies is that they have to invest in it. Like any other product, any other service, any other goals that they have, this employees and uh, inclusion and their culture need, should be a goal and a company priority. And they ha- they must invest in it, not just monetarily, but also like, you know, resources and commitment and the And like they need to understand that, okay, we will do this. We will commit to this. So I think that is also really important. So awareness, assessment and action. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, So uh, it's amazing that this has been happening and you've been helping Finnish companies to be working on becoming more more open to, to foreigners and diverse backgrounds. But unfortunately, there are still many educated foreigners who who are jobless, who are unemployed, and struggling to find jobs in Finland. Yeah. So there was even the study made that showed that if you have a foreign surname on your CV, that you are basically put down, and you are less likely to get to get a job than a person with Finnish surname. Mm. So. Based on your experience, is there any way how this could be prevented and how foreigners could have a bigger chance, an equal chan- chance to, with, with, you know, their skills and abilities to finish people? Hmm. See, I, I it's really unfortunate that we still have that. And I also read the report and um, it is very much true that there is still a lot of discrimination that people are facing based on their names. And uh, there is like, you know, it's an attitude problem. If you think from a, a perspective that as humans, we are we think with a tribal mentality and you trust people with uh, similar backgrounds and who you know and who you can trust. So that creates these biases uh, in your in your mind that uh, you don't even know while making the choices that you are preferring someone else. That is why I said that first and foremost thing is it's important for every individual to question themselves, question their biases, you know, so because uh, the unconscious bias that we, we are talking about, it's a very quick momentarily response that our brains are giving. And uh, if you're aware of it and you're not ashamed of it, if you know that I am biased towards Finnish looking names, you take a step back and stop that thought Once you stop your conscious, unconscious thought, you can make decisions with your conscious mind. So that is one way that if you educate yourself, it becomes easier. But of course, then it's not a very like it, it is much possible that you miss and it's not 100% possible that all the people they're able to do this. So I think a very important thing is to make the conversation about it normal in our society and also in our workplaces. Um, Think about it. If our leaders, they say that, hey, I am super committed that I need international and foreign people in our company and let's make it, let's make this culture here. And you know that is the commitment your company have. And then every time you keep listening, things that is happening and people are talking about it, your You yourself, your unconscious brain, yourself, it's learning that it's not something unknown for you. 
similarly in the society so it's a great thing what you're doing here like <laughs> making <laughs> this you. thing normalized to people because when they hear more about it they understand that it's not rocket science you know it's not it's not difficult and it's not unknown to us anymore and it makes it much more easier for people to get over that thing and of course then you can have a lot of different tools and technologies that can support you into this but i would say one of the main things would be to make it so normal that it doesn't remain uh you know unknown for you and for your brain yeah totally totally i totally agree with all you said I, is there anything that um the companies have are there any signs of the companies that are more likely to be to be open to foreigners as such, are, are there any like main things that you already see straight away in company and you are like, yes, it looks like I'm sure that they will be open mm, to, yeah. to work with foreigners? You can you can see in their marketing the the language that they're using. You know, you can if they are posting jobs, how they are posting, what language they are using. Is it inclusive? Are they writing we want? Is it's written in English, but then they write "We want native Finnish." You understand that it's not. It's not like you know. I've seen so many jobs like that yeah, that you're like, true. oh, finally, this is it. This is it. <laughs> this is amazing. This is just made for me. And then you see fluent in Finnish. Yes, exactly. And it just like shuts the door. Yeah, and also then you see that uh, the companies which already have a lot of diversity, they are more open to other people and so it's it's kind of like to attract different people uh diverse people if you have more diverse people it helps but if you if you're the first time you are hiring someone you might uh you might have some barrier but of course you can always get past that and uh be more open in your communication and of course when you see that people are so um you know teams they are talking to each other they are more mingling to each other they have a good culture you can see that more innovation is happening you would know that they are more open to new ideas and new people yeah yeah for sure i i actually attended one workshop that focused it was last autumn that focused on uh how to get uh, international students who are finishing their studies into the job market in Finland. Okay. And uh, people from different companies, Finnish companies, participated there too. And it was with uh, Tetoimisto, the mm-hmm. unemployment office. And they were sort of trying to find ways uh, how we could make it better and what is the biggest struggle. And at the end, actually, the biggest struggle was the language. Yeah. And many of them said that because they have everything in Finnish, it's such a big deal for them to change everything into English that they rather hire a Finnish person because it's easier. I think it's a token excuse because uh, when I first came to work with our clients, all of our, all, mostly, most of our documents were in Finnish, right? But they were open to experiment and see what happens so it doesn't you don't have to change everything overnight you can you can do it in a process so when when a new person comes you just have to tell them like okay what are their responsibilities and they can also take uh you know Uh, an initiative to translate it to also learn language on the job actually learning language on the job is the best way to learn a language and so there has to be this you know a middle ground where they can come to and uh, there has been cases where people have got jobs into Finnish companies who were ready to try and uh, you don't I, I really think that language is a token excuse and if you really want to test it out you can do you can hire an intern for example you don't have to give all the company information to the person in in English right so they can they can um, they can work on particular topic and then you can go ahead from there and more and more people you bring into the company they will uh, your documentation is also changing all the time and of course you can also start telling your people slowly that okay let's do this thing that once in a week let's write our notes in English 
let's do this minutes uh, minutes of meeting in English so that even if we don't have any documents in English, we will still have the notes from the meeting. So there is a lot of small ways that can be done. It just it's more of an attitude problem than a language problem. Of course, in some job job titles, you need language. If you are a content writer for Finnish audience, you have to speak Finnish, right? But in in places where you don't necessarily have to speak Finnish natively, you can live with a little bit of Finnish or even no no language skills. I think it's possible. We just have to try it and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, so I know that you are working with companies, but if you would advise a foreigner that is looking for a job right now in Finland... What sort of strategies should they use and what is the best way to get their dream job in Finland? Do you have any advice on that? Yeah, I think uh, this question has come up a lot of times. And I think um, one of the things that the people they can do is to brand themselves. Because technically, if you think you are selling yourself, your skills, Right. So if you have that, you don't have to be an entrepreneur, but you can have an entrepreneurial mindset to sell your skills. And you can do that by uh, writing about that topic on LinkedIn or commenting on people's uh, comments with your skills that you have, meeting people, networking and telling them that, hey, this is what I do. And making genuine relationships so for example like if you have uh, you met me for the first time and said that hi Priyanka how are you this is what I do and blah 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 and then it's over versus you come to me and say hi Priyanka how are you doing and then we like talk and you tell me what is your mission what you want to achieve what are your skills and then you continue to have that conversation even after that meeting and we create this genuine bond that if you then ask uh, if someone is looking for a job that might suit you i will remember you and or if i can ask someone else whom i have a genuine relationship with like hey this is one of the person i met and she is looking for this thing uh, could you check in your network so this is like you can create the chain of these relationships that could eventually help you and i don't know if you know about this uh, community i'm also in the board of this uh, international working women of finland and um, I think it is a great example of how community can support each other in uh, these kind of challenges. We are now over 4,000 members and there has been a lot of cases where uh, group members have got job from the community just because people talk and uh, they create these relationships and they trust each other and they have this safe space to show their skills and to talk about it. So I think um, making those relationships, uh, networking and branding yourself in a space is a really good thing because when I started this thing, I did not know that I will start a company. I started three years ago just talking about it everywhere I got a stage. So speaking about it um, and telling people what I think about it. And eventually you also learn a lot, but you also you can position yourself as an expert in that field because you have had a lot of experience uh, in it. So I think those are some things that I, I think that would could might help people. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. But I also think that it's quite exhausting, to be honest. Oh, sometimes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is, of course, exhausting. And um, uh, it's it's also very unfortunate that it has to be exhausting. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, but, you know, like, it's all of us, we can work together to create this society, which uh, going forward doesn't have to be like that. So now, because if you also see Finland is very new to this process, 
if you think about other countries versus Finland, um, the international people, diversity, internationalizations, they are all new concepts. So it will take some time. But if uh, more and more people do it, talk about it, we can change it into a solution-oriented approach to actually do something about it and create frameworks and things that uh, could help uh, people in the future that they don't have to go through the same process. But we are in the building of those process. And now, uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. That's very true. So hopefully we'll build a better future. <laughs> <laughs> I am very hopeful because I have seen in four years that things have changed, uh, at least even small, there is a change. So it's, it's good to see that, but there is a long way to go. And uh, we all have to work together to make that happen. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And working together, it's, I think it's an essential, yeah. essential thing to, to have a success for all of us foreigners in here. I think so too. And I think it's also important for us to see it as um, like a whole inclusive thing. So not um, even for Finnish people and non-Finnish people, not to see each other as, okay, we are Finnish and these are non-Finnish or us thinking we are foreigners, these are natives. So uh, these things, they still will create this exclusion mentality and does not help in integration, integ integrating each other to each other's ways, right? So it's, it's good to see everyone that okay we are in this together and how we can create solutions and not just complain about it of course there are challenges we have to talk about the challenges let's also talk about what can be done and how uh, both and like everybody can work together uh, and actually create something that might be useful yeah yeah i really like the hands-on process yeah I think that's my favorite approach. Yeah, to, I can see you're do doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we have the podcast, because exactly. we were just tired of waiting <laughs> to get a chance. So we just, you know, did it ourselves. And, you know, that's, 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 that's really what we good. are doing. That's really good. It's creating an impact and that's wonderful. We hope so. We hope so. And we believe so. And it's amazing whenever we get you know just a little message of mm. of a person saying like hey this is an amazing it's been really helpful i just wish it existed five years ago when i just moved here already yeah. and i'm true. still learning which is just just amazing and you know thank thanks to all of our guests including you and thanks to all of our listeners perfect that that's important and thank you for doing it yeah thank you is there anything else you would want to share with our listeners that is on your mind i would say that as i as i said that we are all in this together so it is our responsibility each of us to make ourselves aware about what we believe in what are our biases what are our privileges what stereotypes we think in and question ourselves all the time because when we question ourselves we also find more about us as a human being as a person and eventually it might help us to be more you know culturally intelligent emotionally intelligent but just like uh, empathetic people and that's what we need in the world right now more empathy for each other for different people so that we all we all are equally um, represented and also have a voice and feel that we belong in here yeah that's an amazing that's an amazing advice for for the end of of, of our podcast Thank you very much, Priyanka, that you found time. Thank to you do this so with much me. for inviting me. Yeah, I'm so grateful that 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 you had a time to really share because your thoughts are are very important, and I hope that it impacted some of our listeners and as well. Yeah, and thank you for everybody listening. If you want to contact me, you can always uh, contact me on LinkedIn. Yes, we will also share your LinkedIn if we can. Sure. Uh, in into this episode and and people can contact you there and of course if there's anything we can share co consider considering your company or your mission just sure. let us know and and we can work together we will be very happy to work work with you definitely as you said to work together to make the future better for us. <laughs> perfect <laughs> really nice yeah 
All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and see you next Monday. Bye. Bye-bye.